HBO is a network known to many as one of the longest running premium cable channels in the world. And back in the height of the cable TV craze and the beginning of the internet age, HBO launched HBO Family sometime around December of 1996. The original plan for the channel was to feature family friendly movies and animated series aimed at children. The network had tried a similar form of programming back in 1992 called Take Two, as well as Festival in 1987. HBO Family was the third and only successful attempt at this type of programming by the network. In the mid to late 90s, the race was on to capture a still relatively untapped children's television market, specifically with educational content. Around this time, things like Nick Jr. and Playhouse Disney began program blocks for younger children and HBO wanted a piece of the pie. They would create one of the most creative and unique educational shows of all time called Crash Box. Crashbox is a Canadian-American educational children's television show that originally aired on HBO Family. The show takes place inside of a computer where green game cartridges are created and loaded in by rusty-looking robots for viewers to play. The animation and art direction was very unique, featuring claymation-style stop-motion and traditional animation in certain games. The series was a cornerstone for HBO Family when it released in 1999. The games kids would play were always educational and forced children to focus in order to win without feeling boring. But there were also games that tested kids' ability to stay focused and to think outside the box. In the game Captain Bones, kids would be greeted by a skeleton pirate who is so bored that he makes up math puzzles by jumbling his bones. He would also constantly throw insults that were comical at the viewers in an attempt to distract them from answering and focusing on the puzzle. Arr, ahoy matey, shiver me timbers! Yo ho ho! Look alive, ye lollygaggers! I am the incredibly dead Captain Bones! I've been sailing the seven seas for an eternity, and I'll tell ya, I'm a born stiff. The only thing that saves me from going stark raven mad is making up math puzzles using nothing but me own bones! Now watch closely, and just do as I say, or I'll surprise the life out of ye. Another game was Distraction News, which was a game that starred a cardboard cutout fictional news anchor, Dora Smarmy. She would give educational news and facts with a bunch of distractions thrown all over the screen. The game's objective was to remember as many facts as possible without falling for the distractions all over the screen. And now, Distraction News, with your anchor person, Dora Smarmy. Good evening, I'm Dora Smarmy, and welcome to Distraction News, where we give you the news, and at the end of our newscast, I will ask you five questions about what I've reported. So make sure you're not distracted. Sketchpad tested kids' ability to solve riddles. The game featured laid-back jazz music with Sketch, the character, and you would have to fill in the blanks, or find the missing pages, as he would say. This game featured a unique animation and laid-back feel. It was 2D hand-drawn cell animation with cool colors giving it a nice vibe and change of pace from some of the other games. Hey cats, it's your friend Sketch here to lay something heavy on you. Just cause you got eyes, doesn't mean you always see. You got to get the whole picture before you really know what's going down. Don't believe me? Well, I'm gonna show you some pages from my sketch pad. But not every page. See if you can tell what's happening before I show you the missing pages. You dig? Picture this. 
Haunted House Party was a historical facts guessing game. They would show silhouettes of historical figures and give facts about them to see if viewers could guess who they were. The game took place outside a haunted blue mansion and featured a mix of 3D stop motion animation and claymation as well. Good evening and welcome to the haunted house party, a party where you will be compelled to identify our mystery guest. Daunting, eh? Uh, well, no, I don't know what daunting means, but believe me, it will be. Our guest of honor has just arrived. See if you can guess who he is before... well, just before. <laughs> Revolting Slob was a game centered around a puppet in a disgusting house surrounded by rundown furniture, old moldy food, and the slob himself who had dirty fingernails, a unibrow, a gut showing through his ripped clothing, and a hairy belly button. The slob would always be on the couch with his bunny slippers on. His game was actually a female narrator using the slob to ask questions to the audience, usually multiple choice. The questions would usually be about the slob himself or items in his house. <laughs> You know, we can learn a thing or two from even the most uh, peculiar people. Observe. Hello, revolting slob. Ah, uh -uh. before you dig into those tasty beans, can we have your attention? What do you want me to do? I'd like to teach our viewers a few new words. <laughs> There was many more games. Some honorable mentions were Word Shake that was a game that featured a man dressed up as a chef using a fairly offensive fake French accent. The chef would show several words and sending them out would reveal the hidden word. Eddie Bull was a clay character who was always eaten by a different animal and he would not be able to get out without the help of viewers guessing which animal ate him. Eddie would give hints as to what ate him and viewers would find out the answer and then he would be released. Radio Scramble was a game that featured a robot host that ran a radio station called Radio K-Box. The host was DJ Jumpin' Johnny Jumble. This game was a word scramble game in which the host would show viewers a jumbled word. The objective of the game was to help Johnny unscramble the word. This particular game was exceptionally cool. It's just so incredibly unique and clearly stylized with care. And actually, that's one of the common things with almost all the games from Crashbox. They all had a clear direction that was unique, creative, and fun. Crashbox wasn't very popular. It carried a small cult following, but sadly only lasted two seasons with a total of 39 episodes. They were roughly 25 minutes apiece. The reason for the cancellation is still kind of unknown, but it's speculated that the show may have been too expensive to produce. The studio behind Crashbox was Planet Grande Studios and was animated by Cup of Coffee Studios, which fun fact was behind Celebrity Deathmatch from 2005 through 2006, as well as Glenn Martin DDS and JoJo Circus on Disney Channel. Crashbox was a show I loved as a child. I thought the animation was so unique and the themes were so outside of the norm. I do think that Crashbox will continue to live on for a few more years as reruns are still aired to this day in 2019 even though no DVD or VHS had ever been released. Children's educational programming today for the most part is not nearly as unique as Crashbox. They often just cover simple colors and numbers. Crashbox was different and it introduced education on critical thinking through puzzles and riddles. It was truly a fantastic show. But a few years before Crashbox came a show from Disney Channel that taught kids to love science. Your public school teacher almost certainly wheeled in the old box TV on the cart for this show. It starred a man now, forever known as the Science Guy. That's right, I'm talking about Bill Nye the Science Guy.
Okay, everyone.